Okay, we're here with HVR Stream and we're interviewing Andy Grant. Um, we're excited to have him here. He is one of our music partners at HVR Stream and I'm excited to be able to get a an opportunity to talk to him a little bit about his musical journey as well as his inspirations. And with us today is also Phineas Robert. He is our Director of Artist Relations and Music Technology at HVR Stream. I'm Erwin Rodriguez. I'm gonna be hosting Inside the Music with HVR Stream. All right, I'm gonna ask a couple of questions. Andy, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, so some of it, um, some of the questions are gonna be fun questions and we're just gonna chat a little bit with you. So we're gonna play um, overrated or underrated. And we're gonna ask you some of the questions that you feel are either overrated or underrated. All right, so Taylor Swift at football games, are they overrated or underrated? Yeah, um, so Taylor Swift at football games, I would say in general, um, I'm not the overrated, underrated aspect. I'm kind of like, I have a hard time picking because um, I kind of have like nuanced opinions or whatever, I guess. But um, I would say definitely overrated in general, just because it's just been uh, oversaturated, I guess. Like, <laughs> you know, like during the broadcast, it's it's uh, it's so in your face. It's hard not to get like <laughs> it's I know it's hard not it's hard not to have passionate feelings about yeah about it. <laughs> pretty much yeah exactly like one way or the other like um oh. but yeah um so i'd say overrated probably overrated all right um how about usher's performance at the super bowl overrated oh. or underrated yeah um so usher's performance at the super bowl i'd say i actually thought uh I'm not actually sure what the general consensus was. I haven't really like seen what people have said about it as much, but I thought it was pretty good. Like, so I'd probably say underrated. Yeah. Um, I was pretty impressed by like um, a lot of it. It felt like you could tell that he was definitely singing it. There wasn't a ton of extra vocals behind it. And I'm like, that's pretty impressive to be doing all those moves. Nice. Yeah, that's impressive. You know? And roller skating. I'm and yeah. That. No one I'm like, ever, yeah, so no one ever did that before. Usher, yeah. where have you been? I was like yeah. so impressed. Definitely. I forgot that I loved Usher at one point. I was like, oh my gosh, I did like I did like Usher. Yeah, and he has so many hits, right? It's like it reminds you, like through all these, uh, through at least a couple decades, he's got a good amount of hits that you just almost forget that it's him, or like you know, you're like, oh yeah, that song, I remember that. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. I'm a '90s guy, so I mean, definitely brought back some nostalgia. I was yeah. so impressed by all the things that he did at the Super Bowl. Uh -huh. All right. Thank Here's you. the next one. Elon Musk's X, a.k.a. Twitter, overrated or underrated? Yeah. So in general, almost, I guess. out. Oh, yeah. So Elon Musk's uh, X or Twitter, I would say in general, probably overrated. Um, yeah, um, I would say even outside of the Elon Musk aspect, it's pretty good for like getting news updates quickly. I feel like sometimes you, especially like I follow sports and like there's certain people, um, if there's some trade that happens or something, they'll they'll tweet it or exit or whatever you call it now. Like yeah. um, before anybody even, you know, before you get it from ESPN or something, you'll just have some pop up. It's like instantaneous, you know? Um, so that aspect, I guess it's useful, I would say, but uh, yeah, the whole Elon Musk aspect can just be a trip. Like in general, the guy's just very polarizing, and yeah, I, f I feel so. like he's become like a a uh, Marvel arch villain now. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. right? Like he's a like, Lex Luthor or something. Or that, he's I guess like that's entered. DC, but... He's like entered into his villain era now. That's yeah, he is pretty much. Yeah, it, it was definitely for a cause. You know, some people say it was it was a good tax deduction that he did this. For, mm. <laughs> he did Twitter I like that. Hey, no, I mean. <laughs> yeah it was just bored well, one day sense. i'm like i wonder what would happen if i bought twitter mm. Mm. yeah i we'll still kind of don't get yeah like the whole um yeah the incentive behind making it x too i don't know if there was like an official explanation or it's just all of a sudden it's on the phone it's like updated and yeah it i heard i heard he had that brand um uh, uh spinning around mm -hmm. in his uh history for a long time that, oh, that, that it, it was a previous brand or company that he once had called X and that he kind of like resurfaced it oh, um, okay. and rebranded Twitter with it. But then, you know, I, 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 
you know, I, I'm not I'm not following Elon, but I mean, you know, I I, I do like entrepreneurs, so I'm yeah. I, I was interested in hearing what that was about. Um, but that's his story. All right, yeah. let's go on to our next overrated or underrated '90s music. Overrated or underrated? I would say underrated. Uh, yeah, this is a little easier for me to have like a specific opinion on, I guess, <laughs> um, because yeah, I definitely. I mean, I was born in '92. So like um, I was young during that time and everything, but I still relate a lot to the 90s and consider myself a 90s kid and all that. Um, and it, it's kind of amazing the the level of nostalgia you get yeah. from some of these 90s songs. Like I was thinking, uh, I'm not usually like as much of an R&B person, but like all there's certain R&B songs from that time period that just give me like powerful feel. Like the Angel by uh, Monica. Yeah. Like anytime I hear that one, it brings me back to that time period. Wow. Like e even just hearing it like on the radio or in the mall or something like um, it just it has like a special aspect to it. And also I would say it's less produced, like overproduced, I guess, if you might say like nowadays, it's like they want to oh. touch everything up. So it's like perfectly presented. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there was a little more like rawness kind of thing. Um, and Very like true. grunge music is like really big for me. Uh, my brother got me into that when I was young and like I feel like there's a lot of good stuff there um, and yeah I mean the boy bands too like NSYNC and yeah. Backstreet Boys those were like well written songs I know I know I, I, know? I, I and everyone was like literally at the edge of their seats waiting for NSYNC to come back and do a tour and then yeah, lo right. and behold it didn't happen <laughs> oh, okay is that, that what happened with it? Yeah, I yeah. never ended up like hearing the follow up with that. I no, just heard the rumors. No, and... it was it was Justin Timberlake pulling, putting out uh, another album by himself, and, oh. and it was not the NSYNC revival. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah, it, it was not. Yeah, because I heard not the NSYNC revival that everyone was hoping for. If, <laughs> right if yeah, NSYNC I... did that, we would expect Destiny's Child. There's no way they. Could. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, exactly. If Destiny's Child's not coming together, NSYNC is not coming together. So right? yeah, very true. Very true. All right, yeah. um, Mr. Grant. So we're going to transition over to some of our other questions that we have for you today. Um, and we're going to ask um, a couple more, more questions in terms of your journey and your, and your um, uh, as a songwriter. So tell us a little bit about your journey as a songwriter and musician. Yeah, so um, I would, as far as my journey as a songwriter and musician, I would say... When I was young, uh, my dad's side of the family is just very musically inclined in general. Like if we went to uh, family gatherings and things like that, like there's always going to be a guitar pulled out and everybody just starts jamming type thing. So from that perspective, I was just around it a lot. Or my dad would even just play around the house. Like he'd just be like noodling on the guitar or be singing. And he was always in a band too. So I would see him uh, performing that way and everything. And uh, so I was around it a lot and then I started to take piano when I was like six years old, I think. And um, <clears throat> I remember that uh, I enjoyed that, but then I didn't really start to get into it until I had like a uh, secondary piano teacher that sort of taught me like music theory and the ins and outs of that sort of thing, which laid the groundwork for me to be able to write songs. Um, so eventually, like when I was in my teens, like maybe 14, 15, uh, I started to notice those. I never really sang that much, but I was like, oh, I could kind of sing a little bit. And I, you know, I'd hear my dad singing around the house and everything. And I just started to try to develop that as much as possible and just started writing when I was like around that age and um, did like really what I would call like amateur recordings. Like I didn't know too much of what I was doing, but I started to try it and uh, just kind of get my feet wet with it and just realized that I had like this really big passion with it. Cause at the same time, uh, my parents were separating. So I had a lot of emotions I didn't know what to do with. So like, I kind of poured a lot of that into the music, I would say. Um, and I started to listen to, at the time, I wasn't heavily Christian. I would say I would like more like listen to secular music and um, like some stuff that was pretty uh, emotional and like oftentimes depressing even because it would just like I would resonate with it um, and that 
but eventually uh not to get into it i guess we'll discuss more about like my journey with christ later but um i would say uh yeah just i i started to write and then when i was in college i sort of removed myself from it because i was focused on my schoolwork and then uh more recently like 2018 19 um i got back into it and um i also i also joined this uh community record label called hard drive um and they helped me to like they provide a lot of tools and things like not I'm to hard, like uh, plug this. Oh, okay right on mm -hmm. cool cool yeah i really appreciate um the CEO over there, Michaela Shiloh, has been like very um, instrumental in just like guiding me and and they provide some excellent resources. But yeah, like I said, I'm not necessarily trying to plug that or something, but they, they helped me to get back into uh, recording and being able to distribute and just kind of like understanding more about it. Whereas when I was on my own, it, it was like the Wild West kind of thing. Like I didn't know how to organize any of it or like consistently release anything in any kind of way um so yeah i would say that's like a general idea of my journey yeah that's phenomenal um here's another question uh what inspires your songwriting any stories behind the songs you have out now yes so they all really do have a story behind them um sometimes i feel like they might be a little more cryptic uh, for lack of a better word, like I tend to be a little bit um, not direct with how I write sometimes. Uh, so I like the the song, for example, "Live" that I've shared with you guys. Uh, there's very specific meaning behind it. Where I basically um, the what I was trying to characterize was uh, not specifically my journey, like maybe in the past, but I was trying to embody somebody that's very like frustrated with the idea of god and doesn't yeah. know how to approach it and it's yeah. just like putting their emotions out there like uh, you know are you who i who i'm seeking like what's going on here like and just like throwing all their most challenging questions at god and just trying to like understand uh what he is and like if he could really be like a, a guiding light for for this person and um even like uh, in the song I talk about, um, I can't live inside your word. Mm. So I was trying to embody like somebody not really understanding the idea of the word being like food for your soul. Mm. And and just saying, I don't understand. I, I can't just like live in the Bible. Like this is, I don't understand how this is a refuge for me. Mm. Like they're, they're trying to just work all this stuff out. Wow. I, I was trying to characterize that stuff as best as possible, but um yeah i'd say like that that was that song uh there's another one i have called uh left the light on mm. and the way that it's presented is it sounds like a a breaking up of a relationship mm -hmm. uh but you're leaving the light on for rekindling uh, but the real message behind it was uh it was kind of like my love letter to music mm. so i felt like i always left the light on in a symbolic way of returning back to music and writing again because it was always like a true passion and love of mine um so even when i got away from it i was saying we always you know it's always there like i'm gonna return to this um yeah so that's a couple of songs at least the background of uh there's another one called give it all give it all away that um i believe i shared with you guys too yeah and uh yeah so that one is <clears throat> basically my just complete pouring out of myself to god and saying like hey you take the rings because like mm -hmm. i don't do it right yeah um you can have anything i have because it's all yours anyways like I, I tried to just pour out my my everything to him in that song yeah um what about um another couple of the songs that that, that that come to mind are yeah the last stand and two oh, hearts, yeah. two hearts in a stable home, two hearts in a stable home. Oh, I gotta man. tell you, I'm, I'm yeah. like, I have that on loop for me. Oh wow! It's like, mm -hmm. it's like uh, uh, this sort of like this balm. It's like a balm on on a on a on an open sore, open cut, but it, oh, it, right it, it has a soothing very soothing very when i hear it i hear again we can we'll go into like your your influences but when i hear it 
um, I, it, it reminds me of just some of the some of the bands I, I enjoy like Wilco um, Switchfoot right um, those are so uh, Cap uh, the Def Cap for Cutie is another one that I listen to yeah. just some of those guys that, that, that the, those songs that reminds me of just the sort of like haunting but at the same time there's yeah. sort of soothing soothing this that connects with my soul but if you could talk a little right about those two songs man I'd love, I'd love to hear your oh absolutely yeah yeah thank you for bringing those up um yeah, yeah so two hearts in a stable home yeah so I, i'm actually trying to, that was the first song that i released in an official way after like a long hiatus wow like since that was my first one with hard drive um and I'm trying to return to that sound actually recently just to kind of segue uh the stuff that i've been writing now is all just acoustic um for a long time i was working with other producers uh for a lot of the songs in between which was great too um they would have instrumental tracks and i would like write over them but i found that returning to the acoustic um, has been really freeing because i can just kind of pave the way of wherever i want the song to go um, so yeah, but to get back to that one, at the time I was in a relationship and I was trying to embody the comfort that I felt. Um, and it's actually a nod back to my parents' separation. Oh, wow. uh, so I felt that my it was an unstable home. Uh, not to get too into the weeds there, but um, yeah, they're uh and not to diss my parents in any kind of way or anything but we were sort of like a collection of individuals as my brother likes to put it at times wow. um there was a disconnectedness and so i was trying to capture like the level of um comfort that i felt just with her and i like even though we didn't have like a specific house that we were living in i was just renting a room and she was in her house uh but between us we had a home and uh so that's what i was trying to embody in the song was just i was trying to pour out my my feelings as much as possible just about the comfort that she makes me feel and and the the hope that i'm providing something good for her um and and i just try to paint this picture of two two people together in this this home that's not necessarily physical but is spiritual um and then as far as, yeah, the final stand, um, so that one was written on, it's actually, there's another song that I have that uses the same uh, instrumental track that was provided by the producer, but I wrote different stuff over it, uh, just kind of as an experiment. Uh, that's, that song is called, uh, it was one of the first ones I released and uh, the name's escaping me right now. But yeah, I just ended up writing this over that same track. And um, it that one is, is just kind of like a call to, to just unite together. And like, especially with like all the crazy stuff that's going on in the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it was sort of like, I, I think the cover art I made was uh, like a dove for peace and then a chess piece so it's sort of like uh a marrying of like there's a lot of conflict out there but like let's call a truce and have a final stand of just understanding with each other and you know finding common ground with one another like as best we can and try to just approach things instead of i feel like with social media nowadays there's a lot of reactionary behavior and people want to create conflict where there isn't necessarily conflict mm -hmm. and comment sections you you go back and forth in these arguments and um you know i feel like if people just approach things with like possibly an open mind more open mind or like um just with an understanding uh sense of approach i guess well then you know we might be able to relate to each other more and realize we have more in common than we realize so yeah absolutely um all right so we're going to segue into our next question um how has your music how has your music impacted others in their spiritual journey would you say 
Yeah, so as far as how my music has impacted others in their spiritual journey, to be honest with you, I don't entirely know, but I hope it in a positive way because I don't always hear feedback from people necessarily, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. um, it, even you telling me now, like these certain songs that impacted you is like very just uh, gratifying for me to hear that like, because I don't necessarily know. It's kind of like I put it out yeah, yeah. and yeah. I don't necessarily hear back. So um, I, I hope in a positive way, I'm trying to um, gear my stuff more my my heart has been led to like make even more just like worship music like mm -hmm. um and so that's kind of what i've been writing lately um so i'm hoping to like if i can in any way use my gifts to steer anyone towards christ like that's my ultimate goal now like i'm all in on that mm. so um it's good thanks so yeah that's i i'm hoping like if if that if i haven't already then i can in the future like um, so to answer your question, I'm not entirely sure, but I hope positively, you know, I'm trying to yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just put my message out there and see if anybody uh, can relate or that was my original goal was to see if people could relate to get them through something. But I'm being led more and more to just, hey, I just got to point to God, you know, because yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's that's where I put all my faith. So that's how I get through things. So um and I consider any gift I have like just to be from him. So I'm just trying to use that to point back to him. Awesome. Awesome. Do you have a favorite um, scripture verse that inspires you? Yeah, I do. Um, so it's uh, Romans 12, 12. And it's uh, be joyful in hope, faithful in prayer, and patient in affliction. So for me, that one kind of sums up how I think we all should approach life kind of thing. Like, um, I think there's a lot said in like a very short phrase there that uh, it's just as far as just how we approach life. If we if we implement those three, uh, I guess, functions, so to speak, like uh, I think, you know, we're going to be going down the right path. Um, it, you, you, we go through trials every day, right? And if, if we can be if we can not always react to those, especially not in a sense of why is this happening to me, but instead just be patient through it and accept it as a, a, lear a lesson, right? A teaching lesson from God. Like he's He's uh, strengthening your character is the way I see it. Um, with anything you're going through that's turmoil. Well, it's like you hear some of these people that have uh, maybe like achieved a lot of worldly success. They talk about like failures necessary. Um, if you just keep putting one foot in front of the other, like nothing's going to stop you. Type yeah. Thing. Yeah. Um, I love it. I love it. That's powerful. I have a question. So, yeah. Um, part of your process, how would you say when you come up with a song and you say you play guitar, right? You also play piano. I do. So, uh -huh. like, what's your process like when you write a song? Is it something that you just freestyle and you, you say you wrote to, you wrote over beats as well? But, like, right. uh huh. What's your pro your creative process when it comes to approaching music? Oh yeah, so um, I would say in general, it, it's actually very freeform in a sense that, uh, like, there's one that I'm working on now that, honestly, the melody and and lyrical idea just came to me when it sounds cheesy, but I woke up one day and it was just in my head, and I felt that it was like. God putting it on my heart. So I'm like, man, I better like write this down. And uh, just, I guess, just to kind of tease that a little bit, uh, there was that the song idea, like the whole, I guess, motif of it is like, do what the firemen say um, and put out these fires. It's basically an allusion to temptation in our lives. And the firemen are God and you know, the Holy Trinity, basically. Like, if we allude to that, then we can get past any sort of temptation because temptation isn't of God, it's of the devil, not to get too religious and stuff, but uh, you know, he's not tempting us. So yeah, I was like, oh man, like those words were just in my head and I'm like, what does that mean? Do with the fire? Like, and I had this melody and then um, I started to just develop a song around it and like realize, uh, so yeah, for, 
that's one example but uh i would say most of the time it's me just sitting down with an acoustic guitar and coming up with a melody i'm very melody driven um sometimes i struggle with the lyrics as much to be honest that's uh so yeah i'll i'll just hear something in my head or uh the beat idea has actually been like more uh a learned approach because i didn't do that as much it was always just sitting down with the piano and or acoustic and sort of mapping out i used to like really map out a structure with the chord changes and now i kind of just let it lead me a little bit more and i try to uh be more withdrawn from like the theoretical point of view of like this has to be a certain progression and i sort of just let myself be led because i i notice it's more organic that way um so that's like the most recent stuff is i've just been oh what chord fits here i'm not even going to think about the progression as much like what sounds interesting here and it goes so by it, it varies to answer your question so it goes by feel like what you feel in the moment because you don't want to yeah, lose the moment for yeah. especially inspiration yeah so absolutely uh feel driven and it used to be a little bit more rigid like i was saying i would oh uh, this is the progression i want and i wouldn't necessarily vary it a lot now i, I sort of let myself be led um I guess I would say by the spirit, like as much as possible and just kind of like relinquish mm -hmm. that control, like to try to be less, uh, yeah. um, put m myself into a box, I guess, so to speak, like good stuff to make the most authentic. That's awesome. Who, Thanks. who, insp who inspires you as a songwriter? Do you have some inspirations? Oh yeah. Um, so inspirations as a songwriter. So I would say most of them our secular music because that's what i listen to most of my life mm -hmm. to be honest uh and that's anything from radiohead uh tom york from radiohead all right he uh i'm with you <laughs> yeah right on yeah i'm with so, you yeah cool cool yeah so um i really like how they approach one thing i learned about them is uh as far as not to get in the weeds of like music theory but Kind of going along with what i'm saying about sort of unexpected chord changes mm -hmm. and things like that they'll mm -hmm. they'll put a minor chord where you expect a major chord to be or a major yeah. where a minor would be in so like just that alone when i found out they did that that opened up a lot in my mind where i'm mm -hmm. like wow i could just do like an unexpected thing there where like your ear is going to be expecting one thing but it's going to be slightly different um because we're so used to these certain structures in western music yeah um yeah, so if you just true. throw in yeah um, major for a minor like it, in, in an otherwise traditional chord progression you're gonna come out with something interesting and possibly more original not that that's the only goal but um so yeah his songwriting that way and i'm sure the whole band contributes to it too uh for a long time coldplay mm. um with chris martin I, f I feel like he has a lot of raw emotion and i'm sort of drawn to raw emotion i would say yeah, with yeah. music yeah, yeah um so like he th that <clears throat> music embodied a lot of a lot of the feelings that like it, it, it would just connect with me i guess in, in like very um like core ways in my soul kind of thing where i was like wow like i um and i would also say it's a little on the darker side but for a long time nine inch nails Okay. Uh, the Trent Reznor from Nine which, Inch Nails. Which, which album? Okay, so it's it's actually. I'm gonna, very, I'm, gonna cha I'm gonna challenge you. Which album? Oh, right on. It's a very dark <laughs> album. The Downward Spiral. Okay, okay. It's the one that I I, yeah. I was I would like listen to on repeat. That's the one that when my parents were separating, I I mm. just dove into yep. that thing. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of darkness in there, <laughs> to be mm, honest yeah. with you. But like, it helped me like work out. A lot of emotions and there's a specific song in particular um it kind of makes me emotional to think about uh it's called a warm place mm. and uh it's actually all instrumental um but there's something about it that it, it, it sort of goes beyond almost the musicality of it to me um mm -hmm. it, that connects with my soul where I'm, it's like i feel um i'm trying not to get emotional here but i feel the um this where he came from with it um because <clears throat> i know he had like a lot of struggles at the time and uh so it's like i can feel like his soul being poured into it mm -hmm. um and uh 
it, I, I just connect with it. I'm, I'm like, I, I think I really understand, even without knowing how he wrote it, I think I can see exactly why he calls it a warm place. And mm -hmm. so just listening to that, even like I said, not having any lyrics into it, uh, that specific song would really resonate with me. And um, it has a somber tone to it, but it, it's comforting. Like you're talking about almost a haunting, comforting yeah. vibe. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's euphoric too. It's very euphoric. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Threat yeah. is something else, man. Yeah. yeah. There's a, there's a, it's a balming nature. That's, that's the, the essence of when I think about, you know, to, to intertwine the, the, the spiritual and the faith aspect of it. One of the things that makes Christianity very significant, and I think people miss the, 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 uh, the significance of it is that it is able to hold all the emotions of a human being. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't. It doesn't require you to um, suppress them. It doesn't require you to ignore them. You have an entire book of the Bible called the Psalms that invites you to feel all the feels, Absolutely. all all the ups and the downs, and yet Jesus is Lord of all of it. He yeah. is the Lord of all the peaks and the valleys of a human being. Mm -hmm. And and that's what I know. Um, I find solace in knowing that our faith is robust enough to sustain all of that. And yet Absolutely. be yourself and yet um, take you to someplace new where you've never been to before. Um, are there other, other, other inspirations that you can think of um, that, that sort of add to your music as well? Yeah. Um, yeah, to be honest, it's the type of thing like the list could go on and on. Of yeah, course, yeah, I guess yeah, that's yeah, somewhat sure. expected, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's uh, oh, man, all, all, all over the place, really, from pop punk to uh, like I got very into hip hop, especially in college. Uh -huh. um, I had a friend that would introduce me to a lot of like the most classic rap albums, uh -huh. um, like Khalid <laughs> Kweli and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Killer yeah. Mike, and yeah, yeah, like you know, I listened to like a lot of stuff, and I'm like, wow, like it, it's just like a whole perspective switch of like hearing their background and like, and the poetry involved. Mm -hmm. Like, so, I mean, all of that stuff, I'm just like, hats off. Like, I, I, I had a tremendous admiration for like all of that. And I even started to try to write rap music, but I was like, you know what? I can't get to a point where I feel like this is like, I, uh, authentically me in a sense that like, I don't want to be like appropriating anything, you know what I mean? So, yeah, but like, it'll um, work. I mean, if it works yeah. for, if it works for Beck, that's you know, true that's true you yeah you know you can't that's true you know beck beck is one of my faves man he's like Me up too. there that, um, that's a, i'll listen oh, to yeah, his yeah i'll listen to his entire disc, this discography man and it yes, connects yes. with me um but i mean uh, I, when i one of the things i i i caught from your music is that percussiveness yeah to it that sort mm -hmm. of interplay that you that you have with the guitar and I can feel like uh -huh. you searching for that rhythm when as you're playing. I'm a guitarist, yeah. I'm a songwriter myself, so I, 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 I see that relationship that you have with the guitar that's mm -hmm. very unique and it adds to the, how you sing. Um, and oh, so yeah. that special relationship that you have um, with the acoustic and then you play percussively in a way. So uh -huh. I can see that, that, that kind of like hip hop style yeah intermingled in there even in the, in the way that you sing your inflection and right on yeah yeah but yeah to me uh right on yeah there's i the way i think of it uh a lot of music in general i feel like kind of like a lot of the the drive to it is in that rhythmic yeah quality yeah. uh you know the particular the percussiveness and and like bass and like the way that it's driven that way um i feel like a lot of the best music Another thing is space, like it'll have room to breathe. Room to breathe, yep. It's, it's not just overly, uh, there's yep. constantly, you know, saturated with mm -hmm. uh, whatever might be, you could just uh, install there, but like to have that room to breathe is, is, a, is a really big uh, factor too, I think, that I try to implement, but. So here's a, here's a we're, com we're coming down to our last two questions. So as, mm -hmm. you know, as a believer, as a Christian, um, what advice would you give an aspiring songwriter who is just starting in their musical journey? Someone that is, you know, songwriter and also someone who is also a believer, who is also a Christian. Right what, what, kind, what kind of advice would you give uh, someone that is aspiring to write or to um, engage in music? 
Yeah. So as far as advice I'd give for somebody inspiring, aspiring to be a songwriter, and、um, particularly from a Christian perspective, I would say is to write as authentically as possible.、Um, I guess even from my perspective,、uh, I struggle with the words sometimes. But if you can just、uh, even melodically, whatever it may be, like the, the most genuine expression of what you're experiencing, I think will will find its way through the music. So I would say just to make sure that you are approaching it that way and just being as authentically you as you can.、Um, and then nowadays too, I would say like. Just keep in mind giving glory to God the entire time,、um, if they are Christian, because I truly believe that all of that is a gift from Him. You know, anything that we have、um, has been bestowed on us, so it's we're、uh, sort of responsible to use that in such a way to、um, bring others to Christ, or or to help people with things they might be going through. So, I guess.、Uh, It's important to remember that it's a tool that、um, you know you can use in a way that's going to lead people into more negative emotions or positive. You know, like you, you, there's a there's some sense of responsibility there. I would say with yeah, because、uh, it does have a lot of influence.、Mm-hmm. So just keeping that in mind that、um, whatever you're putting out is going to affect somebody some way. So just to try to to bear that responsibility and and just、um, fulfill that as best pos- as possible、um, in order to to present the most authentic product that you think others might resonate with and and just stay true to you basically as as cliche as that is. No, no, that's good. That's good.、Um, last question.、Um, Any upcoming projects you're working on? Anything that we should expect from you in the near future? Yeah,、uh, so I actually have several songs that I'm in the process of writing, or I have written.、Uh, I'm just looking to the side here because I have the lyrics here,、um, but I'm basically just in the process of recording those. So yeah, there should there's one that's finished in particular that I'm just waiting on mixing and mastering. So that one should be out within a month or a month or two maybe. Um, but yeah, there's there's definitely some upcoming music, several songs that'll come out this year that、nice. I just need to finish up recording or or finish mix and mastering. Well, we hope to hear from them on HVR Stream, so we'll we'll、yeah. be we'll be in touch、mm-hmm. to make sure that those songs、uh, make make them all all the way to your uh, to your、um, your library that's、uh, ever growing. So we're excited about that. Um, well, we we wrapped up our time together.、Um, thank you, Mr. Grant, for just talking to us、mm-hmm. about your、uh, musical、mm-hmm. journey, your inspirations.、Um, we look forward to seeing you further as as we kind of grow、um, our platform, and we're excited to have you as a music partner. We're looking forward to partnering with you and doing more stuff with you.、Um, so you'll be hearing more from us as we、um, are continuing to add more and more artists onto our platform. And that's it. Well, Mr. Grant, thank you so much for our time together.、Um, this was again HVR Stream Inside the Music、yeah. with Andy Grant. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank All you. All right. God、finished. bless you guys. We'll talk、right. soon. God bless you.